Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 623. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 623 to 625. Hey, in this trick here, we want to talk about payday loans and how they are financially bad for the person who does the borrowing. And I've done other videos on this, but here we're going to take a little bit further. We're going to do the actual calculations uh, to see what the effect of annual rate is. We're going to do an amortization table to see what happens to the balance if you keep it in for a year. And then we're going to see what happens if they actually take out extra fees on top of just the loan. All right, here's the situation. Um, we're going to get 200 bucks, and the interest we're going to have to pay is 50 bucks. So in 21 days, we have to uh, pay back 250 bucks. And this is not an uncommon contract. I'm going to Alt equals, and then that's the keyboard shortcut for AutoSum, and then use my mouse to click on those cells and then enter. So that's the amount we have to pay back. Now we need to figure out the period rate because to figure out an annual rate, if we know that we have a certain rate for 21 days, that's not the annual rate, that's just the rate for 21 days. So we have to uh, take the period rate and do something to, to, fig to figure out an annual rate. Now what is the period rate? Well, here's the $50 we had to pay in interest, and here's the original amount. This is a part, this is a whole. So in basic math, we say equals the part divided by the whole, and that gives us uh, the percentage, in our case, a rate, a period rate. We pay a 25%, so if you were going to format that as a percent, right, use, use control shift 5. And then if you wanted to increase the decimals, you'd have to, you know, go like that. So 25%. Um, okay, well, that's pretty bad. Where in the world could we get a 25% return for a year, let alone 21 days. If you think about it that way, you know, most of us get what? 3% on our savings account, or if you're at BECU, maybe you get 6% for a year. This is the, the company that issues this payday loan is getting 25% for 21 days, three weeks. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out since 21 days, and we need to get to annual, we need to figure out how many periods, how many three week periods there are in one year. I'm going to say equals the whole year in days divided by the number of days for this rate period. That says how many, so we have 17.38 uh, periods. So in one year, that's how many three-week periods there are in a year. Now, APR is the annual, annual percentage rate. In the USA, it is required by the Truth and Lending Act of 1968, which of course is a joke. The banks lobbied Congress to have APR the required rate when they um, give a contract. If you go to this link right here, it has a, a history of APR and EAR, which are the two rates we've talked about, and it talks about international differences and things like that. But in the US, this is the one that is required. So here we go, equals, right? So the this rate is required, but sure, they're going to say, uh, you know, this is a 25% rate, right? But it's really not, because if we take that rate and multiply it by the number of periods in a year, we get the actual APR. And that is actually, uh, the people who issue these payday loans actually post that. No problem. They say 435% APR. But that is not the whole truth. And the reason why it's not the whole truth is because there's something called compound interest. If you leave it in, so if you wait 21 days, you have to pay 250 bucks. And actually, we'll come down and do our amortization table right here. So at the end of one period, this is a three-week period, so I'm going to put, uh, you know, 21 days, three weeks. It's actually, yes. The end of one period we have to pay, and I'm going to say equals and come up here and click on this 250 bucks. But now, if you leave it in till the next period, there's still, and this is determined by contract. There's all sorts of types of contracts. but. A common contract says, oh, we're going to use this period rate for all the succeeding periods. So what would happen to this 250 bucks if you waited another 21 days? You'd say equals uh, the 250, and now we need to go times, in parentheses, 1 for the principal amount, because 1 times 250 is 250 plus our extra little bit here, our 0.25 for our period rate. Now I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that. 
right? Wow. So, well, you know, some people leave it in, uh, right? If you're there and you have to pay that back. But what about the next period? And what about the next period? Notice I'm dragging it down and it's still always looking one cell above. That means the balance from the period before times are one for the principal and that cell for the actual period rate, 488. But now, double click and send this down, and what happens? The end of one year, approximately 17 periods, you have almost $9,000. Does that seem fair that you have borrowed $200, and within one year, you, depending on the contract, if the contract is all the period rates, you have to pay that back? doesn't seem fair at all. So that's why this rate doesn't really reflect what's happening here, which means we're each succeeding period, we're using that period rate, but on all the interest also. Compound interest is interest on interest. So the effective rate <coughs> equals um, open parentheses 1 plus the period rate. Now remember, anytime you do a formula like this, 1 plus some percentage uh, change or proportional change or rate of change or whatever you want to call it. The one means the principal and the uh, rate is that. We're not going to multiply this times as we did down here, times the original amount. We just want to get the effective rate for this. Still we have to do, sorry, not still, in this case we have how many periods? We have 17 periods. So you raise it to the exponent, which is a caret, which is shift 6. Now that's not quite the whole story. We have to subtract 1 to get the effective rate. And the subtracting 1 is because we have that 1 there for the principal, and we want just the rate. And there it is, 4,734.5%. That's called the effective annual rate. Uh, much more truthful number because it shows the effect of compounding. Now EAR is the rate that has one compounding period per year. Now what they quote is uh, on the sign they say, you know, 435% APR compounded whatever, 21 days or monthly or whatever the period happens to be. So that is a rate, but this is quoted as, that's the effective rate. That means as if there was only one compounding period. And we'll see an example of that in just a moment, how to calculate the end balance at any particular time with this or this. Now, something about the effect function. We use the formula for effective rate here. If you use the effect, there's a problem with it. Nominal rate, that's our APR comma and our NPERY is our 17, but the problem with the effect is it truncates, so it's going to go 17. It's not going to include that little bit right there, so you get something slightly different. But nevertheless, it still shows us approximately that it is brutal. This is uh, not a, a legitimate rate, in my opinion for banks to charge. All right, now what is that? That's a number, 46.91. Of course, if we take that and uh, paintbrush that, and then click right there. You can see that it is a, that's just a percentage format, whereas before we didn't have it. Now, the present, let's, let's do our calculations for future value, and we should get something in between these if we left it in for a year. Now, the present value is equals, that means the day we take out the loan, 200 bucks. <coughs> We're going to see three different ways to calculate this. Now, the first way, the traditional way, is we say, hey, whatever the present value is, times, in parentheses, 1 plus the period rate raised to how many periods? This right here. Now, we don't have to subtract 1 because we're actually after the whole principle and the rate of change uh, compounded, of course. So there it is, the painful truth. The contract actually says, um, borrow this amount and this is our period rate and these are the number of periods or this is the definition of a, the size of the period that is what you owe at the end of one year now let's learn something about the effective rate the effective rate right here is 475 remember we said APR the actual rate compounded 17 periods per year but this is quoted as the effective rate compounded one time a year. It includes, this rate visually gives you all the information saying this has all the compounding, the compounding of interest. This one doesn't. 
That's why back in 1968, the banks certainly thought it was better to have Truth and Lending Act because they're just banks like to take financial fees from us. That, of course, is saying it politely. Um, so let's do it this way. Equals the 200 bucks times, in parentheses, one one plus the period rate. But remember, period rate, one compounding period, so you just leave it like that. Brutal, same thing. Too bad they don't require this to be shown all times in all contracts. All right, and finally, you can use the future value function. The period rate, everything in financial functions has to have the same period, so the period rate is going to be 0.25. The NPER is number of periods, so it's 17. Comma, we do not have a PMT, we're not paying a periodic payment, but we do have a present value, and the present value is positive, it is 200 bucks. That's why when we, and we don't need the remaining argument, this is at the end of, well actually we don't need it, close parentheses, and this will show us a negative because financial functions understand cash flow. 200 bucks came into your pocket, and then at the end, um, that's what's supposed to come out. Now. It still can get worse than this whole scenario here. Let's scroll over here and look at a different example. Our loan amount is 100 bucks, and they quote a period rate of 5%. Let's just say 12 periods per year, but there's an upfront fee. So they give you the 100 bucks, but then they have to take $10 out for the upfront fee. And that, by the way, this link here, uh, is pretty good and it has a, a bunch of different examples uh, uh, and talks about yeah there could be lots of fees this is just one small example of a fee alright so the first thing we have to calculate is the money taken home because right we borrow a hundred bucks but they of course immediately take ten bucks from us now what is the advertised APR well APR is defined by period rate times number of periods per year so there's our advertised APR, 60%. Still seems pretty terrible. I mean, from a borrower's point of view, it's terrible. From an investor's point of view, man, I'd love to find something that returns 60% APR. Now, our future value, that means what we have to pay back if we left it in for the whole year, equals the present value times, in open parentheses, 1 plus our period rate close parentheses, shift 6 caret, which is exponent to the 12. If you wanted to do it with future value, you go equals F phi. The rate is going to be this, that's the period rate, NPER, number of periods. PMT, there is none, our present value that came into our pocket. And that is what the amount that we have to pay back. Notice that this calculation did not have to consider this because what they do is they say we're gonna loan you this but then you immediately take out a fee but since you borrow the whole ten the the whole amount that amount has to be used for the future value. Now let's just look at the effective period rate because it's not really five percent. We only got to use of the hundred bucks, we only got to use 90 of it. So from a cash flow perspective, that's the number we use in our analysis. The effective period rate, we can use the rate function. The rate function uh, gives us a rate. Now, we got to be careful. All the units in financial functions have to be the same. So if we're putting in period rates and number of periods, then I'm sorry, we're not putting in a rate we're going to put in NPER, which is 12. Notice that's periods per year month. So the point is, if the unit is month here, the rate will spit out the monthly rate, or the period rate, not the annual rate. We'll have to do something extra to get that. Number of periods, comma, there is no PMT. There is a present value. It is positive. That's $100 coming into our pocket. The future value, that is the amount we have to pay out. I'm going to click on this one. These cash flows, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, or the financial function gets confused. We don't need to put the type, because this will. we don't need to put it here. And guess, um, this will work without a guess here. So uh, wh why did that come out the same? Because guess what? This present value right here, that 100 bucks, is not what's used in cash flow analysis. This is the amount that they loaned us 
but the cash flow amount that actually came into our pocket as a positive on the day we got the loan is 90. So when we put that number in properly, and this one, which was calculated based on the 100, boom, we get a rate higher than uh, this period right here. So our effective period rate is this. Now, the, we, this is the one we use to figure out actual APR, and APR is defined as period rate times our number of periods. 71%, but we know that that doesn't include compounding, so we're going to say equals open parentheses 1 plus our period rate caret 12. Now this, um, we have to use our minus 1 because we're doing the rate here and we don't want to include that 1 for the principal. 99. So really it is uh, an effective annual rate of 99. Now remember, this is quoted 71% APR at 12 compounding periods per year. This one is quoted as saying, oh, 99.54% compounded one time a year. So our future value, and we could do this as we saw just a moment ago many ways. I'm going to say the 90 bucks, that is the actual cash that came into our pocket because we're doing cash flow analysis here, times 1 plus this period rate, but we only have one period, so control enter, and we get the same exact nasty answer, an effective annual rate of 99.54. So in this video, we saw how to calculate, we saw the uh, apparent immorality of payday loans. Um, said politely payday loans are financially bad for the person borrowing. We saw how to calculate a straight APR, an ear, based on a typical payday loan. We did the painful truth of an amortization table, and then we took it one step further. We said, hey, look, sometimes they take out an upfront fee, and that has to be taken into consideration when you do your calculations. All right, um, hopefully none of you will go out and get payday loans. We'll see you next trick.